to do a couple of book reviews. There are some similarities in these books because they revolve around um, drawing your day, sketching whatever you see in front of you. Like I have a ton of clutter in front of me right now because my desk is filling up and I just want to sit down and paint and it gets more cluttered and more cluttered. But um, I'd do a better job if it was clear because it would clear my mind as well. But anyway, let me get on to these books. Recently, I had a problem with trying to figure out what to sketch. Those of you who follow me on Instagram uh, saw me struggling. And um, some of you said, just draw what you're eating or draw what you see in front of you on your desk. And I thought, oh my God, it was overwhelming because there's so much crap on my desk. <laughs> but like today, I did that. Um, I drew what was on my desk. A few of the supplies, not all of them. So... I thought, well, what the heck, why don't I go through these books? And I have not read them completely, but I did want to go over two books. One of them I have on Kindle because I just couldn't wait. And I do like them on Kindle because I can enlarge the pictures and really look in depth at what an artist is doing. Whereas when you look in a book like this, you've only got a certain size of sketch and some of them could be smaller than others. Now this first book is called Sketch Your Stuff, 200 Things to Draw and How to Draw Them. And it's by John Stitch. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this book a little bit better. Um, not that close. There we go. Um, so anyway, I just started to read this book straight through. And, it, and it's a good book to read straight through, although you don't have to. This guy really does an excellent job at teaching you how to draw certain objects and how to see certain objects. If you get overwhelmed by something that you want to sketch, this, this book can really help you. This guy's name, John, he started drawing when he was, I think, nine years old. His parents, he said, were very supportive and helped him with his first scrapbook. He would come home with drawings and they were filling scrapbooks for him and that's how he got started. Where nobody else in his family was really supportive of his drawing, his parents were. So now he's a freelance illustrator. But he tells things like a story in the beginning of this book. But then later, and he goes through supplies and stuff, but then he talks about drawing your supplies and how to draw them. And he shows things in steps. And he just gives you little bits of information. It's not an overwhelming read. You know what I mean? Um, he talks about, got a perspective issue, here's a tissue. But he's talking about perspective on a tissue box. Then he gets into ellipses and cylinders. And these ellipses are really interesting, like, uh, like drawing your tape. And making it a trapezoid shape, depending on the on the angle that you're seeing it. If you're seeing something straight down like this, whoops, like this roll of tape, um, you would draw it like this. But if you're on a table and it's offset, then you're going to draw it more like a trapezoid. So you put a trapezoid on your paper first before you put your circle in, and you've got your basis for your full roll of tape. Now he teaches all of this in his book and how to do it. Um, then he talks about how to how to draw cameras and 13 things from the desk drawer and drawing hands and all sorts of things. Um, typewriters, crumpled up paper, perspective on that. Uh, it just goes on and on and on and on. Glass and using watercolor and just sketching with pen or without or with pencil or whatever the case may be. But this book, I will tell you, is absolutely worth it. It is so worth the money. Copyrighted in 2016. Um, it also has the flip thing so that you can keep a bookmark in your book. And um, it's just an all around excellent book for sketching. Hang on, I gotta pause you guys so I can get him out of here. So now um, I'm gonna go on to my next book. This one, if you're having any difficulty drawing, is, again, a terrific book for learning how to sketch. If you're uncomfortable with certain things, he really simplifies it, but does it in small bits of writing so that it's not reading like a novel. Every page is like that. After he gets through his foreword in the front of the book, which is more, 
which is more writing, you know, in large writing too. It's in large font. Then all of a sudden it drops down when he starts the book and starts talking about, about different things. Now his portion on supplies, um, most of it is about drawing the supplies, but he does go into a little bit about color, um, using pens, which pens he likes to use, pencils that he likes to use, but it's only a couple of pages, and then bam, you're in. It's actually one, two, three, four, six pages. No, not even that. One, two, three, four, four pages on supplies. And those of you who buy a lot of art books know how frustrating it can be when you spend so much time and so much space in a book just on supplies. So he does not do that, and I really appreciate it. Now, on to the next book that I got, which is on Kindle. I might have to turn my light off so that you can see this. It's called Draw Your Day, and it is... Let me turn my light off. There we go. It is... Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry for this noise. Let me pause this. And... This book I found out about on Instagram. Um... I follow an artist by the name of Samantha Dion Baker. You can find her on Instagram and follow her. She has a public page, and her drawings are absolutely beautiful. Her sketches. She is a sketch journaler. And this book is titled Draw Your Day, an inspiring guide to keep keeping a sketch journal. Now, she says it's an inspiring guide. She does not say that she's teaching you art. So if you're already comfortable with your art, or even if you aren't, and you just want a book to look at, beautiful photos, or you want to read a good story, she tells a lot of stories and how she finds her inspiration for keeping her own sketch journal, which is pretty genius. So these are all of her these are all of her um, her own sketches, and that's how the book starts out. Uh, it was published just the other day. Um, I had been watching it on Instagram or on Amazon. Um, it came out in paperback and Kindle. This other book does not. It's not offered on Kindle at all, which kind of bummed me out. I really enjoy Kindle. Um, I'm gonna change this color to white so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. And increase the brightness. That will help too. Um, so anyway, it goes on. And then she, in her table of contents, she starts with the benefits of drawing practice, creating a drawing practice, celebrating the mistakes that you make, the tools, materials. Let me get to that portion. This is where, I'm sorry, my husband keeps sending me emails. This is where I get a little bit lost and I don't know why this woman felt that she had to spend so much time on supplies for a beginner when this is not a beginner's book. She does no teaching at all, yet she talks about supplies for 26 long, boring pages. And it goes on about erasers, about each pen she's used, about watercolor, about palettes, about markers and pencils and uh, water-soluble pastels and fountain pens and regular pens and glue sticks and washi tape. Oh my God, it's too much. 26 pages. So I do have a problem with that, but then we get back to the good stuff. But I'm already on page 58 of the book out of 138 pages. We haven't even gotten started yet. So that is one thing that bothers me, and I find it a waste of money. I don't care about the supplies. Spend two or three or four pages like this guy did and tell me what you like to use. But state that there's many options out there, just like he did. So that, that bothered me. But then we get back to her journaling pages, and they are gorgeous. They are absolutely beautiful. She has a great talent for drawing. I shouldn't say talent because it's learned. And she is, I don't believe she is a um, educated artist, or have a degree in art. I believe she just started keeping a sketchbook and it went on from there. People loved her sketches on Instagram, so she decided to write a book. And that's that's how this came about. 
Then she starts to tell stories. Now, these stories can get a little long-winded, but they're actually very entertaining. There was one page I wanted to point out. Uh, let's see. Page 69. Oh, look at that one. That one's cute, too. Um, page 69 of the book. I'm just going to read a little ex excerpt from it. Um, and she does give a list of what you can draw, things that you can draw, and she does this periodically throughout the book to give you ideas, bugs, birds, animals, a favorite sweet treats, food, flowers, coffee can or bag, stuff like that, tea bags, um, the weather, signage, vintage cars, street signs, road maps, friend you had lunch with, all of that, a client phone call, um, but then she gets into, is this page 69? She talks about two scenarios. And I'm just going to read this very long paragraph. It says, I have a friend who's very high up in a music company. She has a team of people who report to her. She also has two young daughters, is on the PTA at school, goes to events at least three nights a week, and somehow manages to have coffee with me a few times a month. Her life has so much material for a sketch journal, I would have a blast illustrating her days. Another friend is a writer, has no kids, and works from home. Sometimes she doesn't even have a chance, doesn't even change out of her pajamas all day. You would think she wouldn't have as much material and inspiration as my other friend, right? But let's play with this example. My writer friend wakes up, feeds her cats, makes some coffee, listens to NPR while having a bowl of cereal, and then sits down to write. She basically does this every day when she has a book deadline, day after day. How can she take a break and fill a sketch journal with various illustrations if she does the same thing every day? But there is more to her day than meets the eye. Her hours of sleep, the scene from her window, the dish she prepares for dinner, the ideas she has for her book, the feelings she generates from her creative process, the weather, something she sees on a short walk to get some fresh air, a product in her makeup bag, a story she hears, well, if she's in her pajamas, she's probably not using a makeup bag, <laughs> a story she hears on the news, her shoes, her dreams for the future, and so on. You see, there's always something to draw, no matter where you live or what you do. And that's the point of her book. And I thought this paragraph was really worth reading. Um, but then it goes on, and she has just a lot of stories that she tells, and then her journaling. And it's like she's taking you through her journal, like you were watching somebody's flip through on a journal, but she tells stories about how she got her inspiration and and all of that. But these these pictures are just beautiful, and there's so many of them. She's just... She, she does an excellent job. Um, the only complaint I had, and I have not read this entire book yet, but the only complaint I had was 26 pages devoted to um, materials. So, um, like I said, you can get this book on Kindle. You can also get it in paperback. This book I got on Amazon in paperback. I will leave links below for both of these books, and I think they are both worthwhile. If you don't mind passing through the 26 pa pages of materials, and maybe some of you like that. You like to see what other people are using. You can also follow this woman on Instagram. Again, her name is Samantha Dion Baker. So look her up on Instagram and follow her um, because her sketches are just beautiful and she will inspire you like crazy. So everybody have a great day. I hope this wasn't too long-winded. Buy these books. I think they're terrific. Everybody remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care.